Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Etsy Conversations podcast. And this week I have another inspiring episode from The Vault. And this was originally episode 43. My guest in this episode was Cara Lamarato, and um, she runs the Etsy shop Cara's Vineyard Wedding, and she still does till today. And this episode first aired in September of 2014. And I remember being so inspired by Cara's story because she had left her full time nine to five career in the finance industry to run her Etsy business and it took off and it did well. I mean, she it was a journey. It wasn't like a one day thing, but she shares the story about how that all came about in in this conversation and since then a lot has happened um i've been uh fortunate i was actually introduced to cara by her sister who's kate and both cara and kate have their own podcasts which i would love for you to go and check out cara's podcast is tied into what she does on etsy so she um sells wedding related items on etsy and so Um, Right now, she also hosts her own podcast called Wedding Planning Podcast, and you just get to learn more about what she does and she shares really good information. And, you know, if you're planning your wedding, it's definitely a great resource to check out. Um, And her website is Cara's Vineyard Wedding. You can check out the podcast there or look it up in iTunes. And and like I said, big thanks to her sister, Kate, who introduced us and, um, she also has her own podcast, um, Kate Erickson, and her podcast is called Kate's Take. And it's more of an, well, I shouldn't say more of, it is, well, it is an entrepreneurial business type podcast. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're really interested in growing your business, you might also be interested in that one as well. Like I said, it's called Kate's Take and um, it's on iTunes and it's an audio blog and she shares just behind the scenes stuff about how to run a seven figure business and just breaks things down into step by step systems for doing things and, and gives you lessons and tips that you can implement in your business. So that's Kate's podcast. Cara's again is wedding planning podcast. And you are listening to the Etsy conversations podcast. Um, listen in hear Cara's story and um, then check her out and see just how far she's come in three years and one of the things i like about doing these throwback episodes is that you get to see how how these etsy sellers have grown and progressed over time and these the progress that they've all made has not been overnight or or you know extremely fast but they've all stuck with it and have continued plugging away at their businesses and are just continuing to grow as time goes by and to grow and expand. And car is just a great example of that. So um, have a listen. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think and then go check out um, what car is doing and I will be back next week. But before I go, there's one more thing I wanted to say. Um, One thing I really like about what Cara is doing is that she has an Etsy shop, but she also has a podcast and her podcast is related to what she's selling on Etsy. If you listen to this podcast and you've ever thought that you want to have your own podcast, and I know some of you have because you've reached out to me about starting a podcast and a couple of you already do have your own podcast and we communicate on Twitter or on social media. Um, it's possible. A podcast can help you grow and expand your business. Cara's doing it and you should really check out what she's doing because if you want to expand your business, if you want to position yourself as an authority in your niche, um, you can do that with a podcast. And if that's something that interests you, if that's something that you think you might want to do, um, let me know. I would be more than happy to help you out. Um, it doesn't have to be a business podcast. Like I said, it, it can it can just have to do with what you know and what you're, well, it should be what you know. So like in Cara's example, she has a wedding planning podcast. 
So think about how you can apply that to what you're doing on Etsy and and how you think that might help you grow and expand your business. And if, like I said, if it's something you're interested in, um, I would love to be able to help you. Um, having done this podcast, I think I can I can help you out and just talk you through what you, you need to do and what your expectations should be with respect to running a podcast and um, introduce you to resources, um, resources I use, um, especially when it comes to podcasting, uh, because there's so much information out there. And if if you want someone who who um, can help you just see through all the weeds and, and point you in the right direction as far as resources and where to get help and who to get help from. Um, this would be great. So let me know. I think, I think it's really interesting that, um, she's an Etsy seller with a podcast. I guess I'm an Etsy seller with a podcast, so you can be an Etsy seller with a podcast and I'm going to stop rambling. Enjoy the episode. Hi there. If you're listening to the podcast, then I assume you're either a maker, a blogger, or you run a creative business. And if so, I'd like you to join me for a conference that's coming up next year. It's the Craftcation Conference. It's held once a year and it's a four day conference that features over 80 hands on DIY craft workshops, business classes and social events. It's held from April 27th to the 30th or it will be held from April 27th to the 30th of 2017 in Ventura, California. Now, Craftcation is a conference that's put on by Delilah Snell and Nicole Stevenson. And you might remember I've had them on the podcast. They're the ladies behind Dear Handmade Life. And I had them on the podcast in February of 2016. And that's episode 116. If you'd like to listen to our conversation and just learn more about them, please do go back and listen to that episode. And we also talk about the Craftcation conference in that episode as well. At Craftcation, what you get are skills that you'll need to start your business if you haven't already, or if you have a a business already, take that business to the next level. You'll make longtime friends at the conference and also build your community and support system. It's also a good way to just get together with the creative community and discover or rediscover the inner artist and crafter inside you. Again, Craftcation happens only just once a year and every year it does sell out. I believe there are about 400 people that attend the conference. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's not too big and not too small, but it does sell out. So if you're planning for your conferences for the next year and you're trying to decide which ones you want to attend, um, I would recommend Craftcation. Um, Again, it's four days. It's going to be on the beach, so that's kind of a bonus. And um, it's specifically designed for creative business owners. You can learn more about this um, conference at dearhandmadelife.com. If you choose to go, I do have a discount code um, for anyone who listens to this podcast. You can get $20 off your Craftcation tickets. And that's if you use promo code Etsy Convo. Again, that's dearhandmadelife.com. Get $20 off your registration if you use the promo code Etsy Convo. But go over to dearhandmadelife.com to learn a bit more about it and listen to episode 116 where I talk to Delilah and Nicole. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Here's the episode. Welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast, featuring inspiring interviews with Etsy shop owners, hosted by Ijama Elazu. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the Etsy Conversations podcast. First off, I just want to apologize if my voice sounds like I just woke up from sleep. I actually didn't. I have a cold, so that's why it sounds odd. Um, If you want to reach me, um, the best way to get through to me is um, there's a contact page on the website, convome.com. Or you can find me on Twitter at Convo Me Podcast. I respond um, pretty quickly or as soon as I can. And um, let's see. Yeah, those are the announcements for this week. 
My guest today, I'm really excited. Her name is Cara. And I want to first say thank you to her sister, Kate, for introducing us and making the connection. I'm very excited to talk to Cara because she has a very inspiring story. So hi, Cara. Hi, Ijama. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for being my guest. I was really excited when I read just a little bit about what you're doing on Etsy and how you got there. So I think I think people are really going to like your story and connect very well with you. Excellent. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself first? Of course. My name is Cara Lamorado. I live in San Diego, beautiful, sunny San Diego Woo-hoo. with my, <laughs> my husband. And we have two young children, uh, John and Stella. And my family lives here as well. So we're all very, very close. Um, I have lots of support. And this is where I house my Etsy business in San Diego. I know all kinds of good things are happening in San Diego. It's been a little bit hot for our taste the past (laughs) few weeks. We live right on the beach, which is lovely. um, (laughs) But when it's really warm, we don't have air conditioning. So uh, things get a little bit toasty, but... (laughs) Definitely blessed to be here and, and happy happy to live in such a beautiful city. Oh, yes. Nice. I always say if I had to pick somewhere else in California to live, it would be San Diego. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. It is. So Cara's Etsy shop is Cara's Vineyard Wedding. She's been on Etsy since January 27th, 2011. She has made 976 sales, almost at 1,000. We're going to talk about your big 1k and she has 195 five-star reviews that's excellent cara thank you so much i've worked really really hard to get here (laughs) i bet you have so tell us how did you first discover etsy you know i think i heard about etsy when i was planning my own wedding i got married in july of 2010 and Etsy was kind of, you know, the buzz on some wedding blogs that I was reading and following. And I, it's funny because I never actually purchased anything for my own wedding through Etsy. <laughs> um, it was simply kind of looking around. I, I remember the first couple of times that I browsed, I had no idea. I mean, I would find like a beautiful earrings or beautiful piece of jewelry and I thought oh maybe that would make a nice bridesmaid gift and then I would keep clicking and I didn't know how to favorite anything I would just kind of lose it and I had no idea um, you know how to zero in on someone's store so it was all just kind of a little cluttered in my mind at that time. Oh, right. You needed an Etsy tutorial, huh? I did. I definitely (laughs) did. So I was kind of using it um, more almost like Pinterest, just looking at, you know, beautiful product photos and and being inspired by that. Okay. Um, And then it wasn't until after my wedding uh, that I really zeroed in on the possibility of selling on Etsy. Okay. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. I, I was kind of you know, having ideas about how can I make a little bit of extra money. And um, one of the, I did a lot of DIY things for our own wedding. Mm. And so I was kind of for a few months, really just in my head as I drove to and from work, I would think about, you know, what could I do? And then this one day, I just had a kind of aha moment. I remember where I was driving, what what street I was on when I thought about this. And I thought, tonight, I'm going to sit down and really seriously look into what what steps I need to take to get on Etsy. So tell us specifically what you sell on Etsy so everyone knows. I, our, my store is very specific. I sell place card holders. And also wine bottle stoppers that can be used as guest favors. And then a couple of DIY, um, some flowers and blank wine corks. Uh, But again, it's really specifically wine cork place card holders and the bottle stopper guest favors are really the two main items. Right. And that was that was what came to you in your aha moment. It was. It was the three Excellent. cork. So we used three three wine corks um, on a, and 
you know, fuse the three of those together to make a place card holder. I had bought them for our wedding from like through eBay, actually. (laughs) Um, They were very simple, three wine corks with a satin ribbon wrapped around them. All right. And um, I, I just picked up on this idea of how could I kind of take that idea and just and run with it and really turn those into something beautiful. And you did, I see. I, I'm looking at everything in your store and yeah, it looks like. So do you make each and every one of these? Every single piece is made by hand by me. Oh, yes. my word. <laughs> so so you are doing Etsy full time. I am. Now I am. Yes. Now it, took you a, it took a while to get to that point, but uh, today that is my full-time, full-time job. Yes. Excellent. So can you tell us about the transition from full-time employment to becoming your full-time boss selling on Etsy? Sure. So I started selling in 2011, like you said. Um, at the very beginning, it was really a hobby. Um, anytime I got a sale, it went into this little side bank account that I had tied up to PayPal and I referred to it in my head as my secret account. (laughs) So I make a sale and, you know, in the beginning it was like, cool, I'm going to splurge on brunch and a pedicure or (laughs) I'm going to go shopping and buy this wonderful shirt. And it was really just a hobby. Um, And as I kind of over the first year that I was selling, I really started gaining momentum and the sales built and it turned into, you know, geez, I don't, I don't need a pedicure every week. (laughs) What else? (laughs) It was more than I had expected that it would be. Um, So I kind of turned a focus towards paying off a student loan and that turned into paying off the car. And like I said, this momentum just kept building and building and building and Coinciding with that, I had our first baby in June of 2012. Um, So I took a maternity leave from work, was away for five months. And the day I went back to work was one of the most heartbreaking days of my life. I almost tear up just talking about it. Um, I knew, I knew then that I had to make it happen. I had to figure out a way to make Etsy my full-time gig. And I, I literally put my nose to the grindstone. And for the next six months, that's all. I was obsessed with leaving that job and being my own boss. Wow. So for you, the turning point wasn't so much that you started getting all this success selling on Etsy, even though you were, it was more a personal choice because of your family, your new baby. Right. Okay. So um, when you decided that you wanted to make Etsy your full-time thing, I think it's really important because sometimes people make that decision, but they don't have a plan. Did you have a specific plan, like an exit strategy? I did. And I would go to work every day and, you know, physically I was sitting at my desk, but mentally I was in Etsy land. I mean, (laughs) I was sitting there and just, again, I was obsessed with it and thinking in my head, you know, structuring this game plan and all of it was, it was really a mental game for me because again, I was at a full time job and I was doing that, um, number one. And then number two, I'm thinking what, what needs to happen? I need to get branded. I need to get a website. I need to find wholesalers. I need to tighten up my expenses. I need to, you know, do all of these things, but it was never, I never had the luxury of time Mm -hmm. to really be dedicated to it. It was just something that like I was multitasking mentally while I was doing something else. Wow. So did you, um, how did you start to tackle each thing? Because I know it's, it's really hard working a full time job, wanting to get out of that, but not really wanting to take that leap into uncertainty. So how did you start to tackle each one till you got to the point where you knew, okay, this is it, you gave in, you turned in your resignation and walked away? 
Right. So one of the first things I did was brand. Um, I contacted a bunch of different people who I knew secondhand through friends of friends, um, through blogs, through social media. And I got in touch with someone who did my logo and did my branding across Twitter, Facebook, my Etsy banner, business cards, you know, all of that. And that really gave me a, you know, a, it's almost like a clean slate. So now I have my brand, I have my logo. Um, At that point, it really felt like a business to me. Mm -hmm. And for that, I think I had just thought of it as, you know, this cool side gig fun. I've (laughs) always enjoyed doing it. And it was just extra money. But at that point, once I was branded, I really felt like I was committed to treating it more like a business and running it like a business and kind of went from there. Right. So you had your mind shift. Exactly. Excellent. So now how about your photographs? Because they're just beautiful. I'm looking at them now. Who does your photography or do do you do it yourself? I do all of my photography. No. Um, Yeah. (laughs) So a little little secret, um, every photo in my shop is taken either on my iPhone or on my iPad. No okay. way. <laughs> um, it takes, that's probably one of the most time-consuming computer portions of the work is the photographs. Um, I import them off the device, so off the mm-hmm. iPad or off the iPhone mm-hmm. onto a desktop. And I just use um, Picasa. It's a Google program. Right. And, um, you know, play with the filters and the shadowing and the highlighting. Sometimes I'll use like a soft glow or a blur effect. Mm -hmm. And yeah, everything you see is done by me. Wow. Did you take classes or anything? No, no, no classes. You just have an (laughs) eye, huh? (laughs) Thank you. Okay, so now you're doing Etsy full time. You now have two young kids how do you manage your time? Um, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Good I, answer. I think, I don't know if there's a, if there's a technical, you know, a, a name for this, but I, I really kind of work backwards as I like to think about it. So I have things during my day that are top level priority. And of course the top one is my kids. Mm-hmm. Um, they're two and five months old. So they're both still at home all day, all day, every day with me. Oh, you have a fresh baby. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so the, you know, the first thing, the first thing on my list is, is them all day. Okay. Um, and with, as anyone with young kids knows, there's any plan, any schedule is really hard to keep. Um, and they are on schedules, of course, but mm-hmm. it's it's not the type of schedule where you can say from two o'clock to four o'clock, I'm doing emails and computer work and then I'm going to sit and craft. And yeah. it's really all just kind of, all right, let's play it by ear. <laughs> two people are napping. That might last five minutes. That might last two hours. You never know. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I really, like I said, I take the things that absolutely have to be done that day. Another big one for me is I have to make dinner and sit and eat dinner with my husband. That's non-dispensable to me, no matter how busy it is. Um, That's an hour of time that we have carved out of our day and nothing kind of, nothing impedes on that. So then at the bottom of my list are things like TV and sleep and sending text messages and checking Facebook. So, you know, any time that I don't get during the day to do what needs to be done, I, I just kind of go to bed later or wake up earlier or it's all a very, it's, it's a very all over the place kind of, kind of schedule. A very fluid <laughs> schedule. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, you kind of answered a question I was going to ask is if you have like a set cutoff time where you say, OK, by 11 p.m. every day, I'm going to go to sleep no matter what. So if you don't get something done as far as the business, as long as your family is taken care of, then you ca- you call it a day. Or do you make sure that you always get something done um, for your business after you've taken care of 
your first priorities, which are your family? Honestly, it really depends. And that's one of the things that's so beautiful about working for myself is one day I can take care of 20 items on my to-do list. And the next day I might be tired at 930 and go to bed. Um, so it really, it really does change day to day. I have days where I don't stop and I don't go to bed and I'm sitting with a glue gun in my hand at 1030 <laughs> at night. When, and then, like I said, I have other days where I just I, I throw in the towel at nine and I'm in bed by 930. So it really it really kind of depends on the day and the number of, you know, orders that have to go out tomorrow. Do they have to go out tomorrow or can they go out the day after tomorrow or next mm -hmm. week? So it's all really kind of depends on on a lot of different factors. Okay. That's a, that's a positive for working for yourself, I guess, is that, you know, you, you get what you get done when you have to, but then you can dictate when that is. Exactly. Exactly. And that's really, it's, it's really nice when you have little kids to have a schedule like that. Oh, yeah. So is your Etsy shop profitable? Yes, it is. Oh, excellent. How long did it take to get to um, break even and then to profitability once you started focusing on Etsy full time? Um, I would say I was profitable in, the, you know, in the early stages. And what I would do is I looking at the way things grew, I would really at the beginning, take one order at a time and then kind of parlay those profits into something else, another idea I had, or maybe, you know, with this next sale, I'm going to buy up the next quantity from a wholesaler and get a price break on that. And so it was really this just parlaying one sale into another, into another. So I'm grateful and I was fortunate that I never really had like an outlay of investment into doing this. Um, it really just grew organically. And then once I started doing it full time, I mean, it was really just an extension of what I had been doing previously. When would you say that when you started doing it full time, it it just really blossomed even more on top of the organic growth once you were able to focus on it 100 percent? Yes and no. Um, I have I've had sales growth year over year, okay. every year I've been doing it. <laughs> but I don't think that's necessarily a reflection of the time I've put into it. I think it's more a reflection of just growing an internet footprint. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of these little channels, you go to Pinterest, you do use Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Etsy, you have your followers, you join a team, yeah. all of this just kind of snowballs. And a, an amazing thing about doing internet sales or internet anything is that a lot of it is just autopilot. So a lot of it is, you know, you put one pin up on Pinterest and a hundred people repin it. They have just done <laughs> more work for me than I could do promoting myself in a week. Right. Um, so again, as that internet presence has kind of grown, it's, it, it almost grows itself. Um, which again is just an, it's an amazing, amazing thing for an entrepreneur, yeah. an amazing tool. <laughs> So when you're creating a new piece for your shop, what inspires you? The brides who contact me inspire me a lot. Oh. Um, I have styles and colors that I'm naturally drawn to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll have brides contact me with themes, color combinations, ideas and they will ask me you know can you do this and uh, of course I can it's just I never thought about it I never mm -hmm. thought of a peacock feather as like a centerpiece <laughs> <laughs> um lace is one of my best sellers you'll see lace wrapped around a lot of the yeah the individual holders a bride came to me one you know one conversation and said I'm can you use lace instead of satin? And it's like, oh, of course I can. <laughs> um, 
It would be beautiful. I just never thought of it. Same with twine. Mm -hmm. um, so all of these, these incredibly creative brides come to me. And again, they kind of ask for a level of customization and that ends up inspiring, you know, 10 other things in my head. Well, <laughs> gosh, I could use lace and do this and that. And so that's where I get a lot of inspiration. I owe a lot of that to brides I've worked with in the past. Oh, very good. Yeah, I've, I've talked to a number of, of um, other Etsy sellers who say a lot of their new product lines come from custom orders they get from from uh, customers who order for them. Oh, so that's really great. Um, do you spend much, if any, time looking at the Etsy shops of people who sell things similar to yours? Or is, is there anyone on Etsy that you found who sells any items that are similar to what you offer? There are quite a few. Um, uh, the you know the the wine cork place card holder is not by any means my invention or my idea. So there are dozens and dozens of other sellers on Etsy uh, using that format. I really don't spend any time looking at the competition. Um, I don't. I don't have time to number one, <laughs> and I just. <laughs> I don't think it would bring, uh, I just like to stay focused on my own thing. Right. And um, I, I do know from, you know, very broad scale, just browsing through, I browse through the wedding section on Etsy a lot. So mm -hmm. I'll browse through like the decor section or the table setting section, the table number section. And I do that. So, you know, secretly, so I can see if my stuff is on, <laughs> what page my stuff is on. Um, so by way of that, I see other things. Um, okay. But I don't, I don't like to, as a rule, you know, search wine cork place card holder and really dive into it that way. Okay. Have you so far had any bad experiences on Etsy? I have had a couple of stressful experiences, but I wouldn't call them bad. Okay. Um, and I say that because I, I think I learned an important lesson each time something has kind of gone awry when Etsy, when you're trying to refresh a page, mm -hmm. this little uh, stick figure person comes up and it says, uh-oh, a stitch has gone awry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a couple of stitches have gone awry. And actually, most of my stressful experiences have been uh, surrounding, like, shipping. So USPS hasn't delivered it. Or, you know, it usually takes two to three business days for a domestic order to reach its destination. And there have been a couple of times where the package has just gone off the map um, mm -hmm. for, you know, seven days. And the buyer, rightfully so, is really stressed out oh, because yeah. tracking information just falls off. I'm stressed out. So, I mean, things like that have been my, quote, bad experiences, but they're not buyer related they're not etsy related they're delivery related right so let's talk about that with shipping because yeah sometimes i mean let's say 90 percent oh, maybe more than 90 percent of the time shipping goes smoothly but then there are times when something happens and there's an issue with the shipping do you um how do you protect yourself from let's say if you USPS or UPS, whoever you use, loses or damages a package? Um, when, when you're shipping via priority mail, the package is insured automatically. Uh, off the top of my head, I want to say it's $50. I'm not entirely positive on that. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my plan of attack, if a buyer should contact me and say, my package is lost. The first thing, I mean, we're dealing with people who are getting married. This is like one of the most important days of their lives. Yes. And I have accepted the responsibility of getting my product into their hands. And number one priority for me is get them the product in their hand. And more times than one, that's meant suck it up, remake the order and yeah. ship it. 
And then I'll circle back and call the post office and submit, you know, a claim request for a missing package or it ends up getting tracked down down the line and the bride ends up with two sets and they're kind <laughs> enough to send one back. So, you know, it's really my number one priority is get that product to the bride and then we'll figure everything out, out later. We'll figure the rest out later. Excellent. Yeah. One of the funniest um I had shipped a package to Belgium for a girl who was getting married and I I shipped the box and I went on vacation for like two weeks. It was a long vacation. Mm -hmm. I came back from vacation to a message that she hadn't gotten the holders and it was oh, no. like way beyond the time that they should have been to her. So I freaked out. Oh, no. <laughs> um, the package was being held up in customs for there's... That's why it's stressful. You never know. Yes. You know why they're holding it. It probably uh -huh. is just sitting in a corner and someone forgot about it. But uh -huh. how do you contact the customs office in Belgium? <laughs> <laughs> I actually contacted the uh, Belgium embassy in New York City and had what? them like telegraph a message. To... <laughs> and it worked. The package got released and she ended up getting it. You so. are kidding. Kidding. What did the embassy staff say when you called and said? Oh, well, that, that's why it was funny because my husband said, don't they have anything better? Anyway? I know. Shouldn't they be thinking of matters of, of national security? <laughs> But, you know, an angry bride could become a matter of national security. You just never know. <laughs> But it really is just anything, whatever it takes to make it happen, get it, get it done. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, that, that was really That was smart thinking. I don't know if I would have thought of that. Go to the embassy. I was desperate. I was, it was a humongous order. She had to have, even if I had remade it and reshipped it, it never would have reached her in time. So I was at like the highest level of desperation you wow. could ever imagine. <laughs> wow. Um, have you ever had to deal with any bridezilla type brides? Um, you know, in as many sales as I've done, I think once or twice someone has just not been happy with what they ordered. Mm -hmm. And that is 100% fine in my book. I buy things all the time that maybe weren't exactly what I thought they were or, you know, I take it back and return it. And that's my policy. If you aren't 100% happy with what you've bought, please let me know and I will refund your money. That's, okay. I mean, that's, no questions asked. No, no questions asked. How long, how much time do you give them? Um, I, I don't have a set policy. Okay. So I've, I've had um, one person use something, actually use something for their wedding. And there was an issue with, um, it was table number stands, actually. Uh, they had an issue with them blowing over in It was very windy mm -hmm. and um, I, I refunded. I just said, you know, I'm terribly sorry that it happened and refunded the money. Mm. Oh. And, <laughs> and it taught me, it, that taught me a valuable lesson, speaking of which, um, to, you know, put front and center. I had in the listing, I had mentioned towards the bottom that they weren't ideal for outdoor wedding oh. because of that reason. Mm -hmm. And I, lesson learned i put that up top top front and center just you know that kind of took care of took care of that for well, the future oh good thing so i guess one thing for etsy sellers if there's something very specific about an item you're selling that you want to make sure the buyer knows put it up at the top because hardly anyone reads everything and as you get towards the end i think people read even less Yeah, that's so true. It is so, so true. And that's, as a seller, that's stressful to me too, because I have, to someone who has read the policies, the listing in full, I think it's 100% transparent and clear mm -hmm. what, you know, what's going to happen. How does this work? When will my product arrive? Everything is laid out, but people don't always have the time or the attention span to look at every single thing, yeah. um, which I, I can surely appreciate. So you are absolutely right. If you want to make sure that it's seen, it should be in like the top, yes. you know, two to five lines of that listing. Yeah. So that's really sure to see it. Right. 
So now you're selling full time on Etsy. How would you say it has changed your life? Oh my goodness. It has <laughs> from a, a back to that day, the first day I went back to my full time job after my maternity leave. Um, I, I was just so devastated that I couldn't be with my daughter every single day. And mm. it just seemed so backwards to me that I would have this beautiful little baby and I loved her. I mean, you, any parent knows it's a love that you cannot prepare for. You can't describe it. It's unlike anything. And it just seemed so wrong to me that I had to leave her with someone else who was my mom. Thankfully, I was very lucky um, to have her grandma watching her. But it still just broke my heart that my daughter is on a swing set with my mom and I'm at work. And there has to be a better way to do this. And Etsy was the answer to that. Um, Etsy has really given me the avenue to be with my kids full time. And that is huge. I mean, a huge game changer for me and my husband and and the kids. It's it's really, I really feel blessed. Yeah, that's, um, that's really inspiring because um, I think a lot of people aspire to get to that point. One, not just to have the freedom to make your own calls on what you do for a living, but then also, you know, especially parents want that freedom to be with their kids on their own terms. And um, not everyone gets that. So I think I think your story is really inspiring for people who are trying to get there. I hope so. I really hope so. And it's, you know, it's not for everyone. Being a full-time stay-at-home mom is not for everyone. Yes. I know plenty of tremendously successful women who choose to stay on a career path and that's a hundred percent fine. It's just for me, that was not, um, it didn't at the end of the day, when I went to bed, I wanted to go to bed knowing that I had spent the entire day with my kids. And that was so important to me. Yeah. And and you're right. It, it's not for everyone for those who, who do want that. So yeah, that's good. Now let's talk about shop promotion and marketing. How do you, currently promote your Etsy shop? Um, I belong to a team that I participate in daily on Etsy. It's called Team Unity. And um, I've listened to a bunch of the podcasts and the sellers, and I think it's a, a pretty popular thing for Etsy sellers to, you know, team up with a group of people. Yeah. Um, kind of pool our resources in terms of favoriting and clicking and viewing and treasuries. Um, so as far as promoting on Etsy, that's my, you know, that's my go-to. Um, I do a couple of satellite social media channels, but nothing religiously, nothing on a schedule, nothing is set in stone. It's kind of, if I'm thinking about it, I'll, hop on Instagram and post a picture and hashtag the heck out of it. Um, (laughs) If I have, you know, some time at night, I might jump on Facebook and throw up an ad, um, target an ad down to my, you know, my demographic and push an ad on on Facebook. But there's nothing I don't have. I wish I did. um, But that's kind of a a time pinch thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I don't have like a a set marketing game plan. And I, that's something I, I aspire to as I have some more free time in the coming years. I'd love to be more disciplined about that. Okay. Now, how did you decide on team unity as the one you wanted to join? I had an item that was featured in a couple of treasuries by one of the team members before I was, you know, a member on the team. Mm -hmm. And I just saw astronomical favorites and clicks for that item. It happened Mm -hmm. twice. And um, they're very diligent, very disciplined about their promotion. Mm -hmm. So I got a conversation from the Etsy seller who had featured me and it said on the bottom of the conversation, 
um, instructions on how to, you know, look at look into team unity, apply if you'd like, if it's something that would be, you know, fit of, fitting to you. And so I looked at it and I ended up joining because, again, I had seen just such tremendous jumps in my numbers the couple of times that I was featured in one of their treasuries. Okay. Now, so outside of the Etsy team and social media, ideally, what do you think would work also to help promote your Etsy shop or to market it better if you had the time or down the road when when you're creating a marketing plan? I have always dreamed of compiling like a database list of vineyards. Um, California, you know, is huge winemaking region. Mm -hmm. Um, Sonoma, Napa Valley, I would love to just collect all of those vineyards and send out samples and have, you know, really nice, high quality marketing piece done up and delivered to each of those vineyards. It's just something that I I haven't had the time to do. Um, I would also, my other wish list item, I would love to have the time and the flexibility and the freedom to travel and do some more um, wedding, like wedding conventions and social media yeah. conventions where I can really face to face network and meet people. Um, I really don't get to do that now, but I think it would be huge, especially for increasing my social media presence. I would love to be able to, you know, meet a pool of people face to face and kind of build those relationships more. Oh, yes. And th those wedding shows are huge. Mm -hmm. You and I know they usually take place at the beginning. Wait, is it the beginning of the year of the year or end of the year? No, it's the beginning. Yeah, they do a bunch like in the fall time. Fall and winter are kind of big. Right. Because they're gearing up for the next wedding season, like exactly. in the summertime. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I know a, a couple of people who they weren't doing favors, but other wedding related um businesses and they said they just needed to show up for a, a you know a number of shows wedding shows and they were booked for the year yeah yeah i would i would really really like to market that way i think it would be really effective it's just you i mean for the like for the fair or the show that would be amazing mm -hmm. i would equally like to just meet other wedding professionals face to face and build a network of of my peers but I don't know that's something to me that I haven't been able to do online I really think you need to be present um in person and attending you know the the social hours and do it that way I would mm -hmm. love I would love to right and like meetups too those are exactly. great for networking and connecting exactly um there was something else I was going to ask you and now I forgot but you have a website carsvineyardwedding.com and I'm going to have links to Cara's website, her Etsy shop and all her social media accounts um, in the show notes for this episode. What do you primarily use your website for? Ah, oh, sigh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the website is very time consuming mm -hmm. and to be 100% honest, it's not at the top of my priority list. Um, in the past, when I, when I had the website done, I bought the domain, I had it designed and I used it. I won't call it, I don't think it's fair to even call it a blog. I really just used it more as a showcase for my new products. So I would photograph something, list it on Etsy, post it on the website, post, you know, a couple sentence description of it, post a little gallery of photos. But this takes so much time. Mm -hmm. um, so my initial idea for it was just to have, you know, one more footprint out on the internet, one more place where I could garner some views and some traffic. Um, but I have not been consistent in keeping that up. And it's something that, again, on my little mental wish list of if I had endless amounts of time, yeah. I would love to be disciplined and go in a few times a week and maintain that and really keep it updated. But I haven't had the time to do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, writing a website is not, it's not as easy as people think. It's crazy. (laughs) So much time. It It really is. is. It's amazing how much time it takes. Right, yes. And then, you know, all the things you have to do to get found. um, and, And that takes time too. Um, right. So yeah, it's work. It's work. Yep. yep. Sure is. Now, how much time would you say you spend working on your Etsy shop or doing things Etsy related per week? How many hours per week on average? I have thought about that and I do so much stuff while I'm you know, on the go and walking from point A to point B, I'll be looking at a conversation or making a custom listing. Um, The actual amount of time clocked, probably anywhere between 10 hours to 20 hours a week, 20 hours a week being a really, really busy, crazy week. Um, Yeah, I'd say 10 to 15 on average. Okay. Busy time is March, April, May, you know, that, that height of wedding season, yeah. maybe on the upper limit during the winter time, I, the, it, the traffic really kind of quiets a little bit. So. Yeah. I, I was going to ask about that because for most other sellers, winter time, you know, the holiday season, once it starts to pick up around Thanksgiving, Christmas, things just go buck wild. Right. But for you, they calm down. They do. They calm down. And I've been thinking just in the past couple of weeks, actually, I've been thinking of ways that I can kind of keep my traffic up during those months because it's, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's really nice to have a break, but on the other hand, (laughs) it's nice to have the busyness. Yeah. uh, Something doing. Yeah. (laughs) So in the time that you've been on Etsy, have you developed any new relationships like business relationships or connections or even friendships through Etsy? Um, I have one, one connection. I'm, I'm really fortunate. I feel really fortunate to have made is with a calligrapher. Um, so I, I exclusively refer business to her for, you know, the place card holder naturally goes hand in hand with the actual place card Um, and the, you know, the calligraphy name on the place card. That's something I wish I was talented enough to do, but (laughs) I don't, I don't, I wasn't blessed with beautiful handwriting. Um, So I refer business over to a fellow seller um, and we've really done done well for each other you know sending business back and forth Um, that's my big one oh nice yeah my ears perked up when you said calligrapher because calligraphy is my craft that's what I do is it really I didn't do that (laughs) I know there you go (laughs) (laughs) might have made another (laughs) that's all I I've been I'm so envious of people who I, I it's a discipline I mean I'm sure it's part talent, part discipline. It's just, it's beautiful. I wish I could do it. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, Have you ever wanted to quit Etsy or close your shop? Never. (laughs) Yeah, I would think not. No, I really haven't. Oh, good. When you get an idea for a new, a new product or a new item that you want to make, how long does it typically take you to go from when you get the idea to executing it, to it actually coming alive on Etsy? Kind of depends on, well, it depends on a lot of things. It depends on the time I have. Um, What I'll try to do a lot is when I receive a custom order, say I get an order for a color combination that really strikes me um, as something that would photograph well. So I will, you know, get the order, I usually take about two weeks from receiving the order to shipping the product. So I will wait until I sit down to make that order. I'll finish it and then I'll photograph it before I package it. Um, And then once the photographs are done, you know, it, again, it depends on if I have an hour of time available to me and I'm really excited about it, I'll sit down and get that done in an hour Mm -hmm. Um, more times than not, the idea will kind of simmer in my head for a week or two (laughs) weeks or, and it's just kind of a matter of finding, you know, that time to photograph and refine the photos, list it, 
once I list something, I like to then put it up on Pinterest, put it up on Instagram. So kind of a lot of layers to, to the process. Do you find that you sometimes get into a creative rut where just no ideas are coming? No, I really don't. And I, I don't, I, I kind of tend to, I list an item. I, I have a few items that are like best sellers, you could say. Mm-hmm. So I'm not constantly coming up with new, uh, new ideas or new innovations. Um, a lot of, a lot of the sales I do are just, you know, tried and true best selling mm-hmm. classic products that sell over and over and over again. Okay. Now, when you were first, we talked um, earlier about how when you decided to go full time on Etsy, you got someone to do your branding for you. Was that the one thing you did that you would say made the way for you to be successful on Etsy? Or is there something else or some other things that you did when you were first starting to set yourself up for success as a as a seller? I think the branding really helped, um, but I I didn't do the branding component until, gosh, 2012. I mean, I had been selling for almost two years before I did the professional branding. Oh. I think what, what sets up a beautiful shop is you really have to look at your shop through the eyes of a buyer. Mm. Um, the photographs are just of the utmost importance. If you have nothing else, just have a beautiful product and beautiful photographs. And Etsy has kind of evolved. It's very similar to Pinterest. Um, You want to be eye-catching and you want to have simple, polished, professional-grade looking photographs. And I think that's really, that's going to be, half the battle. Um, and there are, you know, a bazillion other things. There's SEO, there's the listing description and the tags and the title and all this other (laughs) stuff. But if you can catch a buyer's eye and have someone look at your product on a page with 50 other products on it and say that one, Mm -hmm. I want to click on that one. And if you can get that click, then you're like more than halfway there. Yeah. Oh, those are so important. They really are. And like I said earlier, I don't, they don't need to be done by a professional. They just need to be, they just need to look like they were done by a professional. <laughs> yeah. And there are so many wonderful computer programs that allow you to do that. I would really encourage someone to kind of get, get your hands on a Photoshop type program and they really work miracle wonders on you know DIY photos that you take on your iPhone or on your iPad or just on a point and shoot digital camera really yeah Yeah. oh sorry go on oh no I was done yeah I I think that's really important I actually just recently wrote a post about that Um, I was talking about using PicMonkey to Mm -hmm. to edit and just clean up your photos just make them nicer and thank you for mentioning picasa which is also free i'll I'll put that in the show notes as well as as an additional resource that people can use because yes even if you don't have photoshop there are you know a number of free alternatives that work just as well I, I i don't have photoshop so i don't know if they work just as well but you can get really decent pictures with the features that they offer right and they, again it just that is it's so important. I I get frustrated when I see a photograph of something that looks interesting, but there's like a time and date stamp on the bottom of the picture <laughs> or it's not fully in focus. And those are the things I'm kind of a perfectionist by nature, but I really think when you're dealing in the Etsy space, I, I just think that there's there's no excuse for anything less than perfect when it comes to your photos. It's really going to propel your shop to the next level with, you know, minimal, minimal work. I, it is, right. It's work, but it's like one thing out of a hundred things. And I think it's so important yeah. that it's done really, really well. Yeah, it's very relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, so just really quickly, because you mentioned SEO and relevancy and all that. 
how did you learn about that? Do you do you do you, you do your tagging and all that for your for your products? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I subscribe to the Etsy Success newsletter um, and also one other mailing list through Etsy. And they'll send, you know, they'll push out, I think they're weekly emails and they do quite a few of those will have mm-hmm. something on SEO. Yeah. Um, and it's really just, uh, you know, taking the time to sit down and do it. I would love to have someone else do it for me. I'm just not willing to pay for it. (laughs) (laughs) I hear you. (laughs) But that is definitely, that's a big, that's a big, uh, a big bear when it comes to being found because going back on something I said earlier, you can have the most beautiful picture you've ever seen, but if you're on page 99, you're Mm -hmm. not going to get seen. Um, So the, the SEO, the tags, the titling, all of that is is really critical as well. Yeah. Now, if you could ask the folks at Etsy to add a feature that is doesn't currently exist on the website, what would you request? For those of us who've been on Etsy for the past few years, again, I started in 2011. And back then, there was, it was called Showcase. And as a seller, you could buy, it was sold by the day. So you could buy a day of advertising. I remember that. Yeah. Remember? Uh 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 (laughs) That was, so when I first started selling, that was one of the things I, I can attribute a lot of my early success to purchasing those showcases they were like seven dollars a day. Yes, and I would just book it up as many as I could get, and they would sell out. They'd go on sale at nine p.m. and they would be sold, booked in you know seconds. Um, if Etsy would go back to some form, some option of paid advertising, um, I would be really, really interested in that. Okay, and I I've, I've used the gosh. It's escaping me right now. The there's a way to promote. Do you know what I'm talking about? The the paid ads, the Etsy ads. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I I've tried those and they really I I'm not a big fan. Um, I haven't had a lot of success at all. Mm. So if again, if I could just pay to have my items advertised in the wedding section front and center, I would I would love to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was good. So. Let's say there's someone listening and they are considering selling on Etsy, but they haven't decided whether or not it's, it's for them. What advice would you give to this person? Well, I think it depends on, you know, there are a lot of different levels to selling on Etsy. If it's, if it's someone who you love your craft and it's truly a passion and you you know, want to do it for extra pedicure money or <laughs> go that's always good money. <laughs> um, jump in, do it. I mean, have fun with it. And you'll kind of learn as you go. Um, I <laughs> by no means had, you know, all my ducks in a row. When I opened my shop, I did it kind of backwards. I opened my shop and I have changed things countless numbers of times over the past three plus years. Um, and then for someone who, you know, really has the drive to be self-employed and have this be a full-time income earning gig, um, I, I guess I would almost offer the same advice. I mean, there's a lot that goes into the back end of being a business owner. There are taxes and yeah. You know, all the non-fun stuff that, of yeah. course, you need to be aware of. Uh-huh. But as far don't wait to get all of that totally 100% ready to go before you open a store. I think you can open the store and have fun with it and learn as you go uh, to a degree. That would be my advice. Oh, good. Now, okay, I'm going to ask you again for more advice because you're selling successfully on Etsy. There are other people who have also been selling on Etsy. Um, you've been there just over three years. What would you say to people who have been selling on Etsy for a while, but aren't 
achieving what they want. Let's say they want more sales or more revenue from Etsy. What would you say to that seller? Um, a, a couple of things. Take a look at your product and make sure, uh, you know, it has to be something, this sounds so basic and silly, it has to be something that people want to buy. Um, and I think in the wedding section specifically, that's a little bit easier than it might be if you're selling art or home decor. Um, I make sure that your product is something that's attractive, make sure it's priced well. Um, and that doesn't mean that it's the cheapest thing on the page. It means that it's compensating you for your time and your energy and your efforts. Um, and then put, you know, put a lot of thought. It's not the most fun part. And we touched on it earlier. Put a lot of thought into your search engine, you know, your tagging, your keywords, yeah. your descriptions. And lastly, get out there on the Internet. Get it up on Pinterest. Get it up on Instagram and really use the Internet to your advantage because Etsy is only one one spot on the internet. There are countless of other, you know, avenues for you to glean traffic from, and you really need to take advantage of that. That's great advice. Um, especially being on the internet, you have to just get out there. Let's go where people are. Yep. And again, it, it becomes almost systematic. Once, once an item is listed, copy it and put it on Pinterest. At the very least, I will put it on Pinterest. Pinterest mm -hmm. is amazing. <laughs> you know, when you talk about things going, quote, viral, yeah. um, Pinterest is really a great, a great place to throw something up if you want a bunch of eyes to be on it. Mm -hmm. um, more so, in my experience, much more so than Facebook or Twitter. Um, right. Put it up on Pinterest and especially with Etsy. Etsy is visual, yes. just like Pinterest is. So use that to your advantage. Yeah. And that's what I was, I was just thinking was, you know, people go to Etsy and they're looking at things. They're they're attracted to things that, you know, pull their their visual eye. And the same thing on Pinterest. Do you just pin your own stuff or do you pin other people's things as well? I do a little bit of both. I don't specifically go through Etsy and pin other people's things off of Etsy onto Pinterest. But when I'm browsing Pinterest, I will repin okay. things I see on Pinterest. Um, okay. So it's Pinterest is wild. I mean, I could. <laughs> uh, so is Pinterest working for you? Need I ask? <laughs> <laughs> It does. And again, I yes. think it's just, it's about having a beautiful picture and yeah. eye catching beautiful item. And that really does a lot of the legwork for you. Good. Um, what's one thing that you're doing right now that you would say is working really well for you? I've kind of, I think the three years that I've been doing this has been an investment that keeps on giving me sales and views. And it, it's just that internet presence, like I said, and it's not something you can build overnight. It's something that happens over time. Yeah. Um, but to have your product and your link out in as many different places as possible, because I, I just keep saying it, it's, it's work that's done for you. And mm -hmm. that's the beauty of the internet. So uh, really, to Etsy sellers um, and, you know, people who would maybe want to be selling on Etsy, really think about where you are putting your product out on the internet, because that, again, will do so much of the work for you. When you're sleeping at night, someone in Australia will be looking at Pinterest and will <laughs> stumble across your product. And it, it's nothing, it took no effort on yeah. your part besides that initial, you know, minute that it took to pin it and then it's right. done it's just done for you right that's the real way to make money in your sleep yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i have to i seize on that because my time i just don't have a lot of time yeah so i really try to hone in on stuff like that and let let the internet do the work yeah good good strategy Cara. what's the best way people can reach you if they want to get in touch with you 
You can certainly visit my Etsy store, Cara's Vineyard Wedding. I'm always on, I have push notifications coming in anytime I get a conversation. So that's a really quick way to grab me. Okay. Um, you can also just send a traditional email either to my personal address, which is caralamorato at gmail.com or my Cara's Vineyard Wedding at gmail.com. Either of those will work. Okay, great. And I'm going to have links to Cara's Etsy shop, her website, the social media accounts, and then also her email if, if you want to reach out to her. If you have feedback on this episode, please go to convome.com and leave feedback for Cara. I'm sure she would love to hear um, if you have benefited from this conversation, which, you know, I think it, a lot of people will. Thank you, Cara, for being my guest and for talking to me today. I really appreciate you taking the time to do it. Thank you, Ijama. It's been my pleasure. (laughs) You're welcome. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. And while you're there, please leave a review, too. Visit ConvoMe.com to leave a comment or feedback on this episode.